I've been told that I make really, really good hot chocolate. In fact, people often say it's the best hot chocolate they've ever tasted. And one person said they thought it was world-class hot chocolate. So it's been a bit of a secret of mine for years, and today I've decided to let the cat out of the bag. It's based on the principle of, to make a really good hot chocolate, you use real chocolate melted slowly. However, I've got a couple of secret ingredients I like to throw into the mix and a couple of top tips, um, just to see if we can raise the bar of hot chocolate around the world. So first up, what do we need? First thing is really, really great quality dark chocolate. I tend to use my own, my little shop down the road, co-op fair trade uh, dark chocolate. I think it's the best. I'll use about 40 grams of that. I'll use 20 grams of another dark chocolate that I really, really like. Um, it's just fractionally richer, but you don't want too much of it. Um, so a bit of a blend, but there's no need to do that at all. Um, they're both 70% cocoa, both 70% dark chocolate, which I think is absolutely plenty. And I'm using 60 grams of that. The first of the sort of slightly secret ingredients is sea salt. And again, it's a really, really good quality sea salt. You don't need very much of it. Hardly any. Um, don't use all of that. The next thing you need, now it was a French choc chocolatier who said to me, um, no matter how good the hot chocolate, no matter how good the quality chocolate is, you must add cocoa powder. And you're going to want about half a teaspoon, a bit more than that, per person. Half a heaped teaspoon of, of cocoa powder, really good quality cocoa powder per person. Now, next secret ingredient, don't tell anybody. Cayenne pepper. You'll often hear of people putting chili powder in uh, in chocolate, I think the Mexicans put chili, make chili chocolate. I like cayenne pepper. There's a quality to it that I just, I just really, really like. So you need the tiniest bit on the end of the back of a spoon. The other thing, because of the kind of the salt and the cayenne, uh, I like to use two teaspoons of um, demerara sugar, brown sugar, sort of lift it all up, sweeten it up. That again really is going to be according to taste. Other things you're going to need, around about a cup full of milk. Um, I tend to use full fat milk. This isn't the low calorie version. I tend to use full fat. I think it's really rich, um, but obviously up to you. I'm not going to use all of that today because the other secret ingredient is um, I really, really like adding to hot chocolate. There's a little drop of hazelnut milk. You can get it in sort of... Um, kind of health food shops and things. But I like to add a feral glug of hazelnut milk to the hot chocolate just to richen it up. Now clearly you don't want to be doing that if the person you're giving it to is going to have a reaction to it, but uh, just check first, because it, it just it adds a depth and a dimension to it. I think it's fabulous, it's great fun. Other thing you're going to need is a, uh, a way of melting the chocolate slowly. You melt the chocolate slowly over steam. Uh, and it's not in contact with the, with, with, with the water, it's certainly not in contact with the heat, because if you get it too hot, the cocoa separates from the chocolate. So um, I tend to use a bowl sitting over a pot of boiling water, which I think they call a ban marie. Uh, I use a metal dish. Uh, a glass bowl is just as good. Anything that will sit comfortably in the pan, won't touch the water, and you can just, you're effectively making a chocolate sauna. Let's take the chocolate for a sauna. So that's what we need. So here we are at the business end of proceedings. I brought all the ingredients over here to the oven. So first thing we're gonna do is um, I'm gonna pop about an inch of water in the bottom of my pan. Not very much at all. That's for my, my sauna, my chocolate sauna. And the next thing I'm gonna do, quite simply, is um, break my chocolate into nice small pieces into the bottom of the pan. Perfect. I'm going to add a tiny, tiny splash. In fact, I'll measure it properly. A teaspoon of water in with that. And that's really just to sort of carry the heat, conduct the heat. 
and I'm going to turn that on initially full, but I'm really going to keep an eye on it and turn it down very, very quickly. So, whilst that's happening, then we get on with the magic of mixing the secret ingredient. I've got myself a nice round glass, teaspoon, and it's just a question of popping them in. As I said, half a teaspoon of cocoa powder in the bottom. With two teaspoons of demerara sugar. The tiniest bit of sea salt. Kind of end of a teaspoonful. Pop that in there. This is the bit you really don't want too much of. End of a spoon, hardly any in there as well. And again, enough water just to get it to all mixed together. And I'll just mix that into a paste. If you put too much liquid in, the sort of it's harder to mix it into a paste, really, because the cocoa powder doesn't naturally want to dissolve. And then once I've got it into a nice, a nice kind of paste, then I'll just add some of the milk to it. Do it over the sink so I don't get it everywhere. But really, just so that it's um, easy to pour. But I've got my, my little bowl of secret ingredients sitting there ready to go. Now, this takes about 15 minutes to melt the chocolate. So don't be in any rush. We're just starting our sauna, bit of steam coming off. And you just, you're really a question of, of doing this gently. So we'll just let that happen nice and slowly. Okay, the chocolate's starting to melt. You can see from the steam, the pan's starting to um, starting to come up to temperature. Turn it right down, right down to kind of one, one or two. The chocolate is just starting to melt. Now your job is the guardian of the chocolate. If it melts too, if it gets too hot, effectively, the cocoa will separate out from the chocolate. And the moment it starts to get too hot, I'm just going to cool it down. And I'm just dunking it in some cold water, just to kind of start it again. So it doesn't, it, 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 the cocoa will want to, if it gets too hot, you'll, you'll see it, the cocoa will separate from the chocolate. So nice and slow. And I'm not afraid to just lift it off the heat, let everything just calm down. It's probably on the lowest heat I can set my oven to. And if I'm also slightly worried about whether it's sort of just getting a little bit ahead of itself, tiny splash of milk. Because ultimately we're going to be adding all of that. And just slowly, slowly, slowly. Now you can see that's, that's really starting to kind of Look like something you want to be involved with. Lovely, isn't it? And it's nice. It's really, really creamy. So none of the cocoa separated. So we caught it. We kept it. We didn't. We didn't heat it too quick. Nice and slowly. Don't be afraid to cool it. Don't be afraid to take it off the heat. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is add my little blend of secret ingredients: my cayenne, my sugar, my salt, my cocoa powder. Get all that in there and just. Gently mix it all in. I use very full fat milk, so you'll see some of the some of the milk cream on the top. That's coming quite nicely now. Once I'm happy, I've completely nailed it, and that just looks that looks great. That looks like I've got it. I've got it really well mixed. Then I'm going to start progressively adding more of the milk, and I'm going to crank the heat back up. So now I'm going to get the sauna 
back up to really boiling because that's how I'm going to heat the hot chocolate ultimately for us to drink. So cranking the heat now up to full, a little bit more of the milk in. I'm not putting all the milk in because obviously I'm going to add my hazelnut milk, but if it's you, eventually you're going to add all the milk. So you can start to hear there the sauna coming up as the heat comes up. I'm now going to add my hazelnut milk. I'm kind of a bit proud of this bit. Um, and I've just gone for quite a lot. I bet I've gone for about 40, 50 mil there of hazelnut milk. You don't need that much. 20, you'll notice it. 40, I like, I like my hazelnut chocolate, so. That's really according to taste. Now you can hear that, and more importantly, what you'll start to see is the actual, the hot chocolate here is starting to, um, starting to steam. That's ready. It's just over hot enough to drink so that when it comes to the moment of um, pouring it in the cup, I can let it stand for a moment. So I'm going to get that in the cup. And there you go. I'm just going to let it sit there now uh, and cool, really. Um, probably going to leave it for at least five minutes, I think. I mean, it feels pretty warm. I don't think it needs any of your marshmallows or your chocolate sprinkles on the top. I, I think that completely distracts, um, and that's the mark of a, a not good quality hot chocolate if they need to dress it up. Uh, truth is, if I'm feeling super luxurious and in that kind of mood, which is very rare, I might get a little bit of really, really cold double cream and put the tiniest swirl in the top. But actually, even that, it, it's just not necessary. Let it talk for itself. Well, let's see what we've got. Oh, it's gone sort of, oh, lovely on the top. Kind of gooey. So I'm a bit shy, so I'm not going to drink this in front of the camera. Oh my goodness. It just blows the lid off hot chocolate. That is exquisite. That's rude. Maybe I shouldn't post this video. Wow. I once had somebody say to me, you made them one and I loved it so much, so make, can you make me another one? So I did. And uh, they felt quite sick, so don't be tempted to do that.